Hey guys, so today what we're going to be covering is uh, securing our web servers using Azure Application Gateway. So here's the topology that we have. We have end users coming in, hitting this domain. This is my domain, mazurelabs.com. And uh, we have two web servers that are not exposed to the outside, so they don't have any public IP addresses. They're internal. And we have the app gateway. The app gateway will have a public IP address. And then they, it would route the traffic and load balances the traffic to the two web servers or how many web servers we have. Now, we're allowing uh, port 443 from outside to hit the app gateway. And then we're allowing 443 to the web servers. Of course, if you want to allow port uh, 80 also, you can. But in this demo, I'm only allowing port 443. Now also, it's, uh, I want to mention that the uh, web servers are in a subnet, separate from the app gateway. So you can't have the app gateway in a subnet with other resources. It has to be only with, with, with itself. And this all is in a virtual network in Azure. Now if you need uh, to know the basics about um, virtual networks, subnets, and network security groups, and how to... Uh, Secure your uh, subnets. I'll leave a link in the description below to my video that goes over uh, these topics and details But uh, for here, let's get to it and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I have So I have the web server one and the web server two as you can see No public IPs and if I RDP into them, I already set up IIS on uh, on both so if if the load balancer or the Azure app gateway Hit the first web server, and it'll say I'm web server one. And if it hit the second server, it's gonna say I'm web server two. So now that uh, web the IIS is working, let's uh, go ahead and create our um, application gateway. So I'm gonna go ahead and say create from here. Yeah. All right, and then here we're gonna search for application gateway. Create. Now I do have a subscription. If, if you have a subscription, you can uh, choose it. If you don't have a resource group created, you can uh, create a new one. I already have one, so I'm just going to pick it. The app gateway name, I'm just going to call it uh, My Gateway. You can name it whatever your business needs or uh, wants. Now for the uh, WAF, I do suggest you go with WAF v2. This uh, is basically web application firewall, and this is the latest uh, version. It'll protect your website. Uh, enable auto scaling. I'm going to disable it. In production, you probably want to do it because basically, every time uh, you have a high load on the application gateway, it would, uh, you know, create a new instance and it would offload this load. But in this lab, I'm not going to, and I'm just going to create one instance. For availability zones, I'm not looking for high, high availability in, in this lab. But certainly, if you're in production, you can go ahead and do that. Now, the WAF policy, I don't have one, so I'm just going to create a new WAF policy. Simply say, Nick, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it WAF policy. The virtual network, I already have a virtual network. I'm gonna pick it and I'm gonna pick the subnet. Now again, if you need help with virtual networks, subnets and network security groups, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. You can watch the video, it goes into these topics and details. So the next thing is uh, to pick a public IP address. I already have one. If you do not have one, simply click on add new like this and name it anything. I already have one, so I'm just gonna pick it. The backend pool is uh, basically the web servers that we have, web server one and two. And once we click on them, I'm just gonna call them web server pool. And I'm just gonna add the IP addresses for the web servers. And click add. 
Now the next thing is we want to add a routing rule. Basically the routing rule tells the app gateway what to do with traffic when it comes. So I'm going to call it web servers rule one for example for the priority if you have multiple rules if you have multiple uh, url and sub urls you can create multiple rules i only have one this is the priority it goes with the priority so if you added a rule number one it'll check number one first and then goes to number two and so on and so forth now we need to create a listener and the listener is basically telling the uh, gateway what to listen to so i want to call it listener one and in my case i'm going to go with https of course it's not a good idea to go with http for a protocol always go with https but with that you actually need uh, a certificate so I'm, I already have a root, uh, a root, uh, I already have a, a, a wildcard certificate that I created. Uh, I'm going to upload it here. Now, if you do need help getting a free wildcard certificate, uh, you can basically uh, look at my description. I'll leave a link in the description that shows you in a few minutes how to generate uh, uh, a commercial wildcard certificate for free. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my certificate here, which is a PFX format, and I'm going to put in the password for the certificate. Now the listener time, I'm going to leave it as basic, and I'm just going to go to backend targets. Now the backend pool we already created here earlier, so I'm just going to pick it. And I don't have a setting, so I'm going to go ahead and create a setting. So web server setting and again https this is the connection uh, between the uh, the uh, the uh, app gateway and my web servers i also want it to be https now the uh, back end server certificate is issued by a well known certificates usually we leave it as uh, no and we're going to i'm going to show you what to do do uh, with it later you need to upload another another certificate the root certificate uh, we're not going to do the cookie based affinity we already explained what this this is basically if you uh if you are if you have if you want the end user if the end user is connected to your app or website and they're working on a database for example and then they got disconnected and you want them to go back to the same web server you would enable this but in my case i'm not going to now override the new host name i'm going to say yes and basically i'm going to put in my domain name and i'm going to say add So now it's asking me to upload the root certificate, which I uh, missed apparently earlier. Oh no, this is the, uh, the um, this is the, uh, the, it needs a certificate name. So I'm gonna call it PFX certificate, just a name. All right, with that, let's take a look, a final look, targets here. Everything looks good. So I'm just gonna say add. Now I'm going to say uh, next, I'm not going to add tags, I'm going to say create. Now this is going to take some time to create, but validation fails, let's see what's going on here. Validation failed. So it says data or key vault must be specified for the certificate. Let's go take a look at the certificate here again and see what we uh, have done wrong. Oh, this is the uh, this is the root certificate that we need to eat, to add, and the root certificate has to be in .ceer format, which I already have. So I called it root cert, and I uh, I'm uploading it. Now the quickest way to convert your PFX uh, certificate into a .ceer for uh, for to upload it here is basically double click on the certificate itself. Go to certification path, 
click here on the first one view certificate certificate details or I'm sorry details and then copy file say next pick this next browse where you want to save it and call it whatever you want so I'm just gonna put it on a desktop for example and call it my root CER or root CRT and save it and click next and finish so now if I look at it here it is and it's basically dot CER format and I'm gonna save it now tags review and create all right validation passed so I'm gonna go ahead and create the application gateway this is gonna take some time in the meantime while this is deploying I'm gonna pause and come back please remember to hit the like and subscribe button for more content like this so in the meantime I went ahead and uh, looked at the IP address for the uh, for the gateway and I went and created uh, an a record to point to this web address this is the application gateway uh, public IP address so anyone that hits www.azurelabs.com would go to this IP which is pointing to the gateway okay so now the deployment is completed if I go to the resource and uh, look at the things in here uh, this is the public IP address that I told you that I told you I added to my uh, DNS here it is dot 62 and dot 62 now uh, if I go to the health of my uh, my uh, if I go to the if I go back to the uh, not the resource group but to the uh, to the gateway itself and I looked at the health of my uh, two uh, two machines back end health I can see they're both healthy as you can see answering on port 443 now uh, if you missed where I added at the end that root certificate it's at the back end settings here you click on it in case if you missed it or if it if Azure did not present it to you because it wasn't really uh, uh, an option for me to add the certificate when I was configuring it so you add it here basically that's where we added the host name and everything if you remember all right so now let's test things out so if I go now to uh, HTTPS and go to www.imagerelabs.com as you can see I came the load balancer and this is outside if I ping imagerelabs.com here I'm getting the external IP address so I have no I'm not internal so I came to web server 2 now uh, the load balancer basically or the Azure ga app gateway which balances between the two web servers sent me to web server 2 now if I refresh this as you can see now it sent me to 1 maybe if I refresh again I go to 2 and so on and so forth now what am I going to do is uh, just to test things out I'm going to go ahead and shut down one of the two machines this is the machine which is the dot 30 I'm gonna just stop it from the Azure portal here which is this one so the one that is open now is web server 2 and now if I go and again I refresh this page I'm only gonna stay on the load balancer would detect that the other one is uh, not working and it would only send me to two now uh, if I go back to the gateway here and I go to the health I should see the other web server is down all right and as you can see uh, this is the uh, the dot 30 it's basically saying that it, it's taking time by the back end pool to respond so it started started airing out eventually it'll be basically red and it's not gonna send to it and uh, basically that's all about the app gateway with web servers uh, remember to uh, like and subscribe for more content like this thank you for watching and see you in the next video